It's a very much like climate change at the moment. You get Alejandro Gagjax, you know, mentioning, you know, well, this is a wake-up call. Everyone's so much happier right now that the air isn't as polluted and there is another way that we can do this. And it's only been weeks. It's not been months. It's not been years. It's been weeks. You know, uh, well, it has been months, but not many months, right? But it's been weeks, really, in terms of... And everyone's saying, look how much cleaner the air is. Look how much... Just because there's less cars on track. But as we get closer and closer to lockdown, the more and more cars are getting on the, on, on the road. And obviously people are saying, hopefully this would be a wake-up call that we need to push towards electric vehicles. And we've had this discussion before about 2040. I think if the government really wanted to, to send this message, because obviously... As soon as we go back to normal, all the cars are going to be on back on the roads, all the buses, all the trains, like everything's going to go back to normal because the infrastructure for electric cars is not there yet. So, you know, how can you change something if you don't have the material to change it? But if the UK government came out today or other governments who've said 2040 is the date for the stopping petrol cars, once they pushed that back five years and said, actually, from what we've learned, we should push this back to 2035 and really push on electric vehicles and get back to this cleaner environment. And I think, you know, that's what, in terms of what a gag is hoping for, and maybe people at Formula E, um, that's what they want. They really want the governments now to come together and say, hey, look, we said 2040, but we've seen what it's like without cars during 2020. Could we potentially push this back? Uh, we'll push this forward in terms of an ending petrol consumption and buying petrol cars earlier. I think it's I think it's entirely possible. Yes, uh, whether they will do it, I'm not so sure. I, I'm I don't think that we're going to go back to like how it was. I th I think everyone will be a little bit more aware now than they were before. Um, but uh, but uh, but you said like we've been in this thing for, uh, we've been in this pandemic for months and and, uh, and we have now. But the thing is, we saw changes after like we saw changes after a couple of weeks. I mean it, I mean I remember about two three weeks into lockdown I, I remember seeing seeing people say that COVID-19 has done more for climate change than Greta Thunberg ever did and I'll be honest it's pro that's probably true um and yeah and and, and, the, and the changes that we have seen is fantastic yes um government should continue to push all the um uh, they should continue to push all the um all the electric vehicles and try to make more of them on the road all, all the time uh however i don't I, I don't think we will see a huge change i think there will be a change to um uh, i think there will be a twitch over towards the end of this decade where there will there will be a lot lot more electric cars now, uh, on the road than there are now but um I think 2040 is still a good target. 2035, possibly, po it might be possible, but 2040 is definitely a safer bet. But if they, if we say 2035, it's probably going to be 2040. Good. If we say 2040, it's going to be 2045 because that's how people work. They, they don't go, they don't arrive on time. I don't arrive on time. <laughs> but the thing is, like, just before I, I, I go to Ed on this, like, in terms of you know, countries like Sweden, for example, and I know you're a big fan of Sweden and the, and the Nordic countries. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're looking into banning petrol vehicles in this decade. Yeah, no, I think um, I think that might be. Uh, um, yeah, I think that might be a good option. But um, yeah, I know Sweden are very good. I know that Volvo, they're only making uh, electric cars now, I think, from uh, from this point forward. But yeah, no, I think it, uh, it, and the thing is, the, these Scandinavian countries—they—they've they, always kind of been on top of um, are uh, of like progressing stuff forward, and they've yeah, and the, that, that that's what I, I love. I love the Scandinavian countries so much. I I, I do have a favourite, but um, but yeah, no, um, yeah. Gee, yeah, I wonder they're, which they're, one they're it is. Good. Sweden, for those who are listening on the podcast apps, um, but. I suppose, Ed, that's the problem that I said earlier that when we, you know, humans are just creatures of habits and they go back into their old ways. Like, there's so, it's so easy that we'll learn nothing from this and we'll just go back to normal and then 2040 will be here and we'll be clutching at straws. Yeah, and uh, I think back to the Paris Climate Accords in 2015 and that was, that was a big deal at the time that they got all these world leaders to sign up to this uh, emissions reducing pledge. 
And then, of course, what happened was a few years later, uh, the, um, there was a new president of the United States. And he decided he didn't like his country being signed up to the Paris Climate Accords. And so he pulled out. And yeah, it's a sort of a kind of, I feel like um, all that optimism and all that, it didn't really lead to anything, the Paris Climate Accords. And so I, I feel there's a lot of potential for this whole COVID-19 of, oh, we've really had to think about the way that we do things and over ah just kidding let's go back to burning fossil fuels and pleasing the Koch brothers and all the other Koch, is it Koch, Koch you know who I mean the um yeah fossil so fuel what, guys 